All right. So um, welcome to this class, um, which focuses on home universal design and visitability. We call that age friendly, but really it's about more than um, one area of um, our demographics. It's really about serving everyone. So um, here is what we're going to try to cover tonight. And while I go over this, if you would like to share, no obligation, but if you'd like to share in the chat box what, what you hoped to learn tonight or what brought you to this class, that might be interesting to know as well. Um, and I will try to incorporate that in what I share. So um, Sarasota County has a program on universal design and visitability. So we're gonna just go over what, what, how Sarasota County interprets those uh, terms, why it matters to us in Sarasota County, and what our voluntary um, incentive program provides to the development community. And then I'm gonna go into the details of what that looks like in a home in the latter part of the presentation. And I think that's probably what many of you are here for tonight is to see the real examples of what this looks like in a kitchen, in a living room. So we have lots of pictures and um, that, that'll be very tangible things that you can take away. Um, so that's the, the outline. As I said, it is um, pretty PowerPoint heavy, but we have lots of pictures and um, very um, concrete strategies that hopefully you'll, you'll take a few away from tonight. Um, I'm seeing in the chat box that folks are interested in um, how to keep themselves safe at home. Um, so the rugs, the bathroom safety, all those things are really good things to be thinking about and we will cover that. And then someone else said that they want to stay in their home as long as possible. So that's sort of that pre-planning. We want to make sure that the home we have is the one that we can be in as much as we can. Um, this other person is um, saying that they're 70 and want to know how to make their home safer. All of these are really great reasons. So sometimes people join this class for themselves in their own home and sometimes people join the class for their family members. They may be thinking about um, a family member that they help care for or that they want to make sure is safe and then other people join um, as professionals and want to help their clients in some way. So I see that we have an interior decorator um, who may be looking at it from that perspective. So whatever brought you here tonight, we're, we're glad you're here and um, we will dig into the details. So as I said, please add your questions to the chat box as we go and I'm going to dig in. So first thing, what are we talking about? What is universal design and visibility? Universal design is a design of, in this case, a home um, that enables occupants to what we call age in place, but it is also um, meant to be healthier, more accessible, and productive for whoever may be living in that home. And um, the a thing that's really important to remember is we also want it to be attractive and stylish and comfortable for everyone, regardless of their age, their size, their abilities, or even if they live in the home. So it may be that someone comes to visit a home and they want it to be comfortable for them as well. So that gets to the second point about visitability. This is a lesser standard, um, and it really just ensures that everyone, regardless of their mobility, would be able to at least visit a home and use the washroom. So you may have family members or friends, um, and you wanna make sure that they can come visit you um, even if you don't have those mobility challenges, that they could come and be comfortable in the, for just the first floor of your home. So why does Sarasota County care about this? Um, we are unique, Sarasota County in Florida, we're on the West Coast, um, and we have the third highest median age of large counties in the country. Um, our median age is 53 years, and 31% um, of our population is over 65. The national, or sorry, the statewide average on that is 18%. So we're far above the state and um, the state is also older than the nation. So, um, and it is projected in our county to increase to 38% by 2040. So we are, we are not gonna go, uh, we're gonna continue this trend of being an aging community. This is the median ages by county and the bluer it is, the, the older the median age and we are here in this very dark blue. Um, and the U.S. median age is 37. This is what Sarasota County looks like. So even within Sarasota County, there are younger portions of our community and there are older portions of our community. So um, there's, there's very important differences um, throughout our geography, even locally. This talks about that projection into 2040 that I've already mentioned. And this, uh, the tan is Florida and the red is, is Sarasota County. 
And the nation itself is also aging. Um, and it says for the first time in, in US history, older adults are projected to outnumber children by 2035. So the, the lines are crossing, right, in terms of the population. But we're not just talking about our aging population. Um, more than half of US homes will at some point have a person with a disability visit them. In Sarasota County, 18% of our residents um, had a disability. And um, it's important to think about this in terms of short-term in injuries as well. When our county commission considered the program I'm gonna tell you about, one of the commissioners had just broken her foot. And so she was very familiar with how hard it was to get around her home um, even though she was fairly young, she had just spent six weeks in significant mobility limitations, and so she was very aware of the importance of having an accessible home. This gets into the um, residents in our county with disabilities and by age, so even um, those with disabilities, we still have a high percentage that are older, um, but they are throughout all age spectrums and all types of disabilities. Um, ambulatory disabilities are the most common, followed by hearing. So this is sort of um, continuing on that same theme of the, the country is getting older, but Sarasota County is the opposite of the normal U.S. population pyramid. Our the largest portion of our population is in that highest tier of age group. So this is actually um, now becoming evident in what people are asking their architects to design their homes for. So this is a, a study the American Institute of Architects does every year. And this is the section um, that talks about um, home layout designs. And the, the first one here, the 61% is designs for aging in place. That came in at the highest for the um, number of architects who report an increase in the requests for that design category. So there's other, other designs people are asking for, but that aging in place is an incredibly, um, in, an in increasing component of what people are asking their architects for. Here in Sarasota County, our um, age-friendly Sarasota initiative did a big survey of um, both boomers and um, the higher age non-boomer elders, and they found that um, those that were considering moving from their current home um, the, the majority of them were doing it because they wanted to um, find a place that would help them live independently and prepare for their personal safety. So many of them felt their current home was not somewhere they could live long term. Um, and so important community features that they found um, were they wanted homes equipped with universal design options. So um, this is belaboring the point that our community is getting older and also is demanding that they really want housing that reflects these needs. I'm going to stop there after I've sort of bombarded you with demographics and data to say I hope everyone on the call has completed your census. The um, 2020 census obviously only happens every 10 years. It's our opportunity to determine how $600 billion is spent each year on um, state, county, and local programs. And the deadline is now the end of September. So um, please go to census.gov and complete your census. It really only takes like five, five minutes. Um, so please make sure you've done that. And a little uh, public service announcement there. All right, so our county um, universal design and visibility program was um, developed in order to encourage the um, builder community to consider these in their own uh, designs. So it is voluntary participation by our contractors um, and it provides a certification when the residential units meet the standards in checklists that we developed. So the visibility um, provides recognition. Um, uh, so they get a decal for the home um, and they're eligible for an award. And then Universal Design also gets fast track permitting. So they get sort of put to the top of the, the list when there's a lot of permits in the line. They get a little bit quicker response time, which we know time is money, particularly in a, in a growing community. These are the checklists and the website where you can find the specific checklist is on the bottom. And I should say that um, I will send this presentation out to, to those of you who registered. If you didn't register and you'd like to receive it, just put your email address in the chat box. You can send it privately to me um, and um, I'll add your email so you get the, the presentation and don't have to be scrambling notes all the time. So this is the checklist that's on our website and it goes through the specific design standards that must be met to um, 
to be participating in our incentive program. But a little tip here, it's also a great checklist for anyone who's just doing this piece by piece in their own homes. So um, it tells you exactly what we recommend for a home to be visitable and for a home to be fully universal design. So the first page is visitable and then to be universal design, it needs to be both the first page and the second page. And it provides the details of um, width of doors and height of bathrooms, um, countertops and all kinds of things. So if you learn nothing else from tonight, go to the website that is at the bottom of this um, slide and you can download this um, checklist for you to think about in terms of renovations or future design in your home. Okay. Um, yes, so there was a question if I could send the URL for the checklist. I'll do that when I send the presentation tomorrow. Thanks for the reminder about that. So our program's goals was first to encourage the, the builders to construct this accessible housing, but also to encourage homeowners to make these kinds of retrofits in their existing homes, because existing homes are far more of our market than new homes. And this is really what this class is all about. So we want to educate the community on what they can do in their own homes and in their families' homes, no matter what the new construction looks like. The website you can go to this, um, we have a universal design website, um, webpage on the county website. Um, has lots of good information um, as well as the checklists. And then this one is our demographics site, which is always fun to play around with if you're a little bit of a data geek like I am. Um, there's also the Universal Design Coalition, which is a nonprofit here in Sarasota County that's doing great work in encouraging this throughout the community, um, as well as Age Friendly Sarasota, which is an initiative um, to support all ages in our community. There's a few other resources I wanted to share before we get into the details. Um, the AARP Livable Communities Program has a home fit guide, which is similar guidance as what I'll share with you tonight. They also have toolkits and resources, um, and it goes beyond housing and also includes transportation. So that's a really great resource. And the National Association of Home Builders has a certified aging in place specialist designation. And this is where um, contractors can actually get trained in aging in place and they get a designation that, that then allows um, you to go to them and know that they're more knowledgeable on this because they've been trained. Um, and this is what their website looks like. You can actually search for um, locally designated um, CAPS professionals, C-A-P-S, Certified Aging in Place Specialists. Um, so you can go there, you can search your region and find those that have been trained in this if you wanna reach out to them um, and know that they've been um, they're a little bit more knowledgeable, hopefully. There's also a section of the University of Florida IFAS Extension website, which is the organization that I'm with, um, which is called EDIS. And this is where you find all the educational documents that you could ever want on landscaping and energy, but there's also a section on universal design. And um, these are links here to the three most relevant EDIS documents um, that will give you more detail on this, um, on this topic. And again, when you have this presentation, you'll have the direct links there. Okay, so before I get into the nitty gritty of what it all looks like in your home, any questions on our program or, um, or on the definitions that what we're talking about? So I'm gonna stop and look at the chat box. Um, it, the question is, are the requirements state specific? So we can talk about that a little bit more as we get into each detailed component, but Certainly each state is gonna have its own building code. So you have to make sure that you meet the state's building codes. And if there's some conflict in there, you obviously have to, to meet the, um, the building code and you can't go, be, go um, in conflict with the building code. So I'd say that's probably the general answer to that. And then as we go, we'll think about if there's anything else um, on the specific improvements that might be specific to states. Um, Maybe in low-lying areas in Florida and um, coastal areas, you might have additional considerations because they, the homes have to be elevated, right? So um, in, in areas prone to flooding, you then have that extra consideration of access to a higher level. So these no-step entries might be a challenge. So there's probably some regional specific concerns related to that that we can think of as we go. All right. I don't see any other questions, so I'll keep going, but feel free to put more in the chat box as, you, as we go. So the Universal Design Coalition is that nonprofit that I mentioned that we're fortunate to have locally here in Sarasota County. 
and they put together this presentation. We used to do it as a tag team and um, they've given me permission to give their PowerPoint as a part of my class. Um, and I will defer to them with some questions that I can't answer, but I'll do my best to get through it. So um, they are knowledgeable professionals um, that are architects and um, home renovators and have been doing this a long time and they have some really good knowledge. So as we mentioned earlier, universal design isn't just for um, senior citizens, it's really meant to be designed for all people. And, and there's some interesting perspectives here. So um, the old ketchup bottles that you see on the right there, um, that's how ketchup was served for many, many years. But in the last decade or so, it changed to this. And it, it really makes a lot more sense, right? It's upside down, so the ketchup is always there when you need it. It's squeezable, so it's easier for people to use. It's less likely to break. There's a lot of reasons that this is more accessible um, to everyone, maybe people with um, dexterity issues or um, strength issues in their hands, this would be a lot easier for them than the other one. So this is just an, a metaphor for what universal design does. It takes that sort of traditional form of design and thinks about it from how could we make this more convenient, more accessible for everyone. There's other examples. So um, luggage, there are newer fun designs for luggage. How can it be more convenient, more accessible than what we used to use in the past? And um, the, the products are really just um, finding these opportunities to make it more accessible and convenient. These are some of the other examples that um, are really interesting to see. So the shears might be easier to manipulate, give you additional strength and leverage. Um, hearing aid batteries are easier to, to put in and they're so small. Um, access to vehicles, all these things are um, something that the design industry in other parts than just housing have really adopted. So there's a lot of room to do that in housing as well. If anyone's familiar with green building, green building's been around for about 20 years or so. And in the beginning, it was, it was not that common, right? Um, and it, it was seen as something that could be really difficult to do. And we've now found that in most cases, it's about the same cost to do green as it is to do uh, traditional building. And we, we hope that that's where universal design will be in 15, 20 years as well. So it's, it is increasingly something that's being asked for and will be expected. So um, most homes are still built with raised porches, stairs to get to them, narrow doors. It's really not currently thought about um, on a, a mass building scale. And we want to try to change that. And one of the reasons we want to try to change that is because the, the extreme alternative to being able to stay in your home is this um, assisted living, nursing homes, and in-home assistance that are very expensive. So the concept is, could you adjust your homes now in design to save yourself those annual costs of those alternatives in the future? Another issue is safety that um, some of you have shared, um, and falls is one of the this, um, major concerns. Um, it certainly is um, common, but it's also important to realize what the falls come from. And so accidents, uh, the environment that people are living in, is causes 31% of falls. So if we can tackle that third of the cause of falls, we can really help with some quality of life going forward. Okay, so there are seven major principles of universal design and aging in place. The first one is equitable use, that it's accessible, adaptable and flexible, safe and tolerant, simple and perceptible, low physical effort, and visitable. So we're going to go through each of those and give you some examples, and then we'll dig into other parts of the home in more detail. First one is equitable. These are just beautiful exam examples of ways that the same means of use for everyone, no matter their ability, um, should be available. So how do we avoid segregating or stigmatizing people who have these needs? Can we provide it to everyone without making it seem special or different for those who really need it? Is it accessible for everyone? And visitors too, we've talked about. This is one of my favorite graphics. So when you get this presentation, spend some time with this one. It gives you, for just one piece of the home, just the entry, 
there's probably 10 examples of things that make a home more accessible. Um, not just that, that no step entry, but is it covered? Can you actually read the lettering on the, the number for the home? Is there light? Is there a safety bar on the side so if someone waiting doesn't fall and injure themselves? There's so many things that can be done just in that entryway. It's really fascinating. Also, the, the width of the entry doors um, is really important, and that's in that checklist that I talked to you about. And then no step entrances are important, not just for folks with mobility challenges, but it's just also easier. You can carry your groceries easier. You can push a baby stroller. Um, maybe as you're moving a couch, it'll be easier. Um, the one with the baby stroller um, was, was me. When I had younger children, I'd take them for a walk around the neighborhood to get them to fall asleep. And then I would literally sit on the porch in the Florida heat so that I wouldn't risk waiting, waking them up just to get them over the two steps into the house. Um, so if I had a no-step entry, I would have had a much more comfortable nap time. Universal design is also um, supportive, so it's about helping you and your family members, and also ease of use and maintenance. These are some really fun examples. Um, raising the dishwasher, as you can see here, providing a, a pull-out drawer um, space where you could actually put down the heavy casserole dish or something that you've just gotten out of the oven while you move around and get yourself comfortable to pick it up again, um, as well as the um, pull out drawers for pots and pans, making it easy to, easier to access than when they might be higher up. Steps and stairways are always a challenge. Um, the lifts are um, something you can do to um, adapt an existing home. And then this adaptable. So you'll notice that these cabinets, there's actually a place for a wheelchair to go in under these cabinets and use the sink. Whereas this one on the right has a bar. So that, that's actually a functioning cabinet where you put towels. Um, but if you could design that this one had the opportunity that in the future you could remove that bar on the bottom and have it be accessible if needed. This one is interesting in the kitchen. I'll um, give you a place to sit if you have trouble standing for a long period of time. Have a pull-out workspace. The low microwave on the side here is something, they're often over the stove and those can be hard to reach. In this case, it's more accessible. Um, and a raised dishwasher. So you've, you've got to have that sort of middle ground space as opposed to the high extremes and the low extremes. There's also the ability to do adjustable counter spaces and sinks. This one here actually moves up and down electronically. And ironing boards also can be designed to be up or down at varying heights. Throughout the house, you'll, you'll talk about um, the doorknobs. So if you have an older home with round doorknobs, you can actually add on these levers after the fact. These are, um, you don't have to replace the doorknob. You can get these to adapt to an existing doorknob. Um, you can also attach these offset hinges in order to enlarge the doorway. So it only gives you an inch or two, but that may be just what you need and you, then you wouldn't have to completely redo the space for that door. If you just need a couple inches, those offset hinges might do what you need. And then they also make the automatic door openers. You see those often in commercial spaces, but they make them for home as well. And this one is one of my favorites. Um, it's important to think about this for outside the home as well. If you love gardening now, you're probably gonna love it later in life too and you wanna make sure that your spaces allow you to do the things that you love. One of the things to think about is that you may not need it now, but design it in a way that you can do it in the future if you do need it. So one of the best tips I've heard is that if you don't have an elevator now that you might in the future, the home could be designed with two larger closets on top of each other. So a two-story home would have a large closet on the bottom and a large closet on the top, and they eventually could be turned into an elevator if that were needed in the future. It's also simple is another one of those principles, making sure that the windows are at a height that you could see it no matter where you are, and also that they're easy, easy to clean, easy to operate. And then those um, lever handle doors, also the double doors that allow more access, more space. That's true for moving a couch, just like it might be for someone in a wheelchair. And convenient, the new sinks that have the no-touch um, faucets 
um, might be good for someone who has dexterity issues, just like someone who's just handled a raw chicken. So there's lots of reasons that that might be beneficial. And then these pull-out drawers for both the pots and pans as well as the plates. Um, I personally keep my plates way up high and it's hard for my kids to, to put the dishes away. So this is a, a really appealing um, change that we might consider. Rocker light switches, they're often seen as something for um, accessibility, but they're also just easier for everyone to use. It's easier in the middle of the night when you can't find it, you're sort of put, put, touching along the wall, it's easier for everyone. And then this here on the bottom left is a pull-out appliance um, shelf. So when you don't need it, it, it can push down and in. And when you do need it, it actually is right at that countertop and you can use it where it is or you can move it onto the countertop. There's also um, all kinds of new sort of smart home technology that can make life more convenient, but it can also provide lots of safety features. For someone living alone, they sell um, sort of monitoring devices or communication devices. Uh, SOS buttons, and also um, there's even new floors that have a, a fall detection um, into the floor or um, fall detection into the sort of monitor devices you can wear around your neck, as well as the, the sort of typical safety features like um, smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors, and all of these are, are really important to make sure your home is safe from all features and can be incorporated into a smart home system. So we've, we've talked about how it's important that this is useful for everyone. Um, this was me in the top left with my small kids, um, but I also have family members that have um, been in wheelchairs or had walkers, and we wanna make sure that it's easy for them, as well as just the sort of delivery people bringing things in um, as well. Okay, so we're gonna now dig into some of the rooms specifically. I've given you some really good examples so far. Um, this is a design of a bathroom um, and the, some of the features that you, you may want to think about. So the, the diameter turnaround is important for someone in a wheelchair. A fold-up seat may be important for someone who has trouble standing or mobility issues. Um, as well, and you can see here, this roll-in shower may be something to consider as well. You can also arrange it so that um, the seat is right at the height where someone could move from the wheelchair onto the seat without having to stand up for too long. Um, the lighting can also be important. It's a small detail, but it's something you want to make sure from a safety standpoint, as well as the no slip surfaces. So really important to make sure that um, even if brand new fancy renovation can, can end up being a danger if it's the wrong type of surface. So those public pebbly um, surfaces or some sort of rubber non-slip strips are really important. Um, and then there are also these temporary solutions like the tub transfer bench that you see on the right. You don't have to completely renovate a bathroom in order to still make sure that it's accessible and safe. This one here gives you a sense of the before as well as the after. They obviously did a big renovation. Um, you can see this is a fold-up bench. I think it's fold-up. I've seen one like that that does fold. It might be permanent. Um, and then you can see under the sink there's room for, um, it's an open under sink that would allow the wheelchair access there. Um, the grab bar you can see on the side um, and as well in the, in the shower as well as by, over by the toilet um, and the um, the shower, uh, the handheld shower is useful for someone as well, so they can control um, what, what water they get when. Let's see, I think we covered most of that. The height of the mirrors is something to think about. Uh, removable ca cabinet front and continuous flooring under the lavatory. This is that slide-in bench that I mentioned. And another example of a bench and the um, removable shower head. All right, so um, open knee space or those adaptable spaces. Here's the example of the fold up um, shower bench. So when someone doesn't need it, it can just fold up. Anti-scald faucets, so this is important. Um, you don't want it to be too hot and they have some sort of controls on that. And I think that's most of that one. Um, the grab bar, so people often think they look institutional, um, but you can get them in sort of attractive colors and designs, so they're, they're becoming much more diverse in, in the options. 
And these um, toilet paper holders are, are really a, a great addition. You don't have to struggle with those sort of springy middles anymore. You can just sort of put it on and it doesn't require as much dexterity or really just effort in the middle of the night. You don't want to have to deal with that. All right, moving on to the kitchen. Um, this is a before and a uh, before. Both of these are befores. And this is the after. So again, a big retrofit, but give you a sense of some of the things that they did. Place to sit for the workspace, um, the, the low level accessibility of the cabinets, the less used stuff way up top and the more used stuff down below. Um, this is the um, shelving system for the plates. I just love that down below. And the two um, tier dishwasher. So if you're living alone, you can run just half a load. Um, but if you have a full load, you can run both of these drawers. Really cool. And then the toaster down below the cabinet um, gives you good accessibility for that as well. Let's see. So this microwave um, shelf is one of those pull down ones or pull up in this case. Um, the shelf, the open shelving makes things easier to put away. And on the bottom left is also a pull down um, shelf. So you can put the glasses in and then move the shelf back up where it goes. Um, let's see, lower cooktops and lower um, faucet countertops are useful. You can see the controls for the stove on the front instead of the back. The back is a, a real danger. People have to reach over a boiling hot or a, a frying pan that can be a burn risk. Okay, so for the laundry room, the front loading can often be easier, but you want to make sure they're at the right height. So if you have to bend down too much, it's no longer going to be accessible. So the, the platforms or the, um, the platforms you can buy or you can build in are, are very helpful. Um, the control is easy to operate on the front. And having a work surface nearby can really help. So you don't have to move all around carrying the big um, laundry basket. The garage is a space we don't often think about, but um, many people use their garage um, to get in and out of their home. So you got to make sure that even if the front step, if the front entrance to the home is no step entry, what if you drive into your garage? How do you get into the home then? So they do have these lifts that you can have onto the, um, the step up from the garage if that's there. Let's see, I think we've covered most of this. The, the grab bars, this is an old picture, the, the grab bars can be more attractive than that now. The other thing that's really interesting to me is that sometimes just changing the color of something can increase the safety. So these stairs, the wooden stairs, you can see actually it's kind of hard to see where they stop and where they end, right? So they just added some blue tape to create a contrast for the eye to make it safer when you're putting your foot down you really know where it goes. They also then um, renovated them to actually be different colors in the new renovation, so it's even easier to see. You can do the same thing in um, transitions between rooms. Um, I think that's a really interesting way and it's probably a cheap way to increase safety. You might want to think this isn't as common here in Florida, but um, where you have the higher entrances, sometimes it might be um, cheaper to add the no step entrance from the side than from the front. And you may even want to think about a side door. It doesn't have to be that every door is accessible. Just one of the doors needs to be accessible, right? Also light for walkways and light for hallways at night um, are really useful. So they can also be very pretty, but it's important for safety in terms of knowing where you step and stepping safely. Um, these chair rails, sometimes they, they were installed for just aesthetics and to keep the chairs against the wall, but it also gives you something to hold on to as you're walking around. So if you have a, um, something that, that isn't really a grab bar, but just gives you a little bit of something to hold on to. And here's another example of the, the controls on the front of the stove. Talked about the lighting, so there also, you could also have power failure lights so that they turn on when the power goes out, you still have something. Um, all the detectors that I mentioned. Um, you can have motion detector lighting in some places. And I love this um, stair rail that actually has lighting underneath it because stairs at night can be particularly unsafe. So this would be something you could flip on from the bottom or the top so that as you go down, you know that it's safe and then you can turn it off. 
Someone mentioned about rugs. So rugs are one of those things that when someone goes home after surgery, the doctors and the occupational therapists are gonna ask you to make sure that your rugs are either up or very secure because those are one of the really big tripping hazards. So removing rugs or changing um, to make sure they're slip resistant and then the floor texture itself. So a really slick hardwood floor can be um, often just as dangerous as a rug. So I wanna make sure that whatever your flooring type is, it's secure and it's slip resistant. We've talked about the grab bars and the design and some of these are just really great. So you'd never think that this towel holder was also a grab bar, but it's really about how is it secured to the wall and to the studs and, and will it hold you if you need to hold on to that. Okay, so the top three, if you could only do three of the things that we've talked about, what are the most important ones? The first one is they're, they're removing about the barriers to use. So that level entry, the no step entry, and the 36 inch wide door. Those are the, the first thing you enter going into your home. We want to make sure that those are accessible. The kitchen um, with a minimum five foot diameter so that everyone can get into the kitchen and actually um, keep themselves safe while they're in there. And then that first floor bath, and these are also in our, our checklist. So the, the width of the door, the clearance, um, within the, uh, the turnaround space, uh, the roll-in shower, and the higher toilet with grab bars. So those are what I would call the most important features for a home. And, and you may decide that that's not most important to you, but based on how you use your home, what is the part that you think is um, where you want to tackle first? And, and I want to make sure we come back to this. It does not have to be institutional looking. Um, it can be really well designed and still be accessible. And so everyone wants to age in style and should have the, the right and the ability to do that. So that is the detailed PowerPoint heavy slide. Um, I am very happy to answer questions or, or hear your feedback, other ideas that you've had um, or that you've shared with family members. And so you can go ahead and um, write those in the chat box when you, get it, when you um, think of them. And if you don't have any questions, I'll thank you for joining us tonight. I'll follow up by email tomorrow. We do have an evaluation that we'll send you tomorrow. If you don't mind taking that, we'd appreciate it. Tells us how we can improve and, and whether you learn something and whether you might take something away and actually apply it in your home or in a family member's home. So um, when you get that link, please, um, please take just three to five minutes to fill out that survey for us. Yeah, so that knobs on stoves in front in a home with children, that's about that balance of, of age friendly for all ages, right? So um, when I had smaller children, they did sell the um, child safe um, controllers for the stoves and you could put them over those front controls and you had to do an extra step, sort of like a, a child friendly um, prescription bottle. You had to do an extra step to turn it on. Um, so that the younger kids couldn't control it. So, um, but you also want to think about what age of what age are your family members and who's most likely to be using these. Um, certainly, for um, older adults, it makes sense once the younger ones are gone um, to to think about that front control. And um, but definitely be safe for that for younger kids as well. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, someone has a, a brother in a wheelchair and did slanted mirrors in the bathroom. What a good point. So the height is one thing, but also what about the, the angle? Really, what, what a good point. I'll make sure to mention that in the future. Thank you for that. And then the, there, we often get this question of, are they available at hard, hardware stores? Like, can I, can I readily get these? And the answer is it depends and sometimes and, um, you know, maybe not for the full diversity of the options that I showed. You might need to do some good research on that. Um, but yes, some of them are available, particularly the, the sort of one or two options might be in the large hardware store. And then if you want more diversity, you'll need to do some searching online. Um, there are some specialty um, uh, companies online that, that you, they, you can search this type of thing. Um, and you also could reach out to one of those CAPS specialists that I showed you in the beginning, those professionals who've been trained in this, and they may have the relationships with the manufacturers that they can get the products that maybe we can't in a retail standpoint. 
Good. All right, so I'm seeing um, the increased height of the workbench um, to reduce lower back strain um, and then change the height of the crafting table to meet the parameters for the reading glasses. Oh, how cool. So that's like in that gardening category. If these are things that you all enjoy doing, you should still be able to do them into the future. So design them in a way that's good for ergonomics for your body. Um, and so um, what great examples, the crafting table and the workbench should all be at the right height and the right distance from um, the workspace. So thank you for sharing those. I'm reading the chat box and trying to catch up. Let's see. I hear some people got good ideas for their future home, um, also for a bathroom renovation. I'm so glad to hear that. That's exactly what we hope that out of this, you will take just a couple ideas or if you're doing a full renovation, take that checklist and give it to your contractor and say, for my bathroom, I want all of these things in it. If you're doing it from scratch, that's the way to do it. So do it at the point of renovation. Um, and then if you're lucky enough to be building a home from scratch, give it to your architect and they can do the whole thing. All right, we'll share these with us as you do the evaluation tomorrow. We'll ask you what might you do differently as a result of the class. So just throw those ideas in there. We'd really appreciate it. Thank you for joining us tonight.